In this episode of At the Aga Khan Museum, an Antiguan Quebecois poet and an Iranian Quebecois musician share their work. Soil of which we are all citizens. A rare close-up look at ancient craftsmanship. What we're looking at is an incredible page from a once intact book of poetry. A musical performance of an Iraqi family ritual that is being documented for the first time. Hello, and welcome to At the Aga Khan Museum. Tohida Tanya Evanson is an author, a poet, spoken word artist. She's based in Montreal. And Puria Purnazeri, also is based in Montreal, is a musician of Iranian heritage who plays tambour, setar, and daf. In 2022, they were commissioned by the Aga Khan Museum and the Institut Francais to create videos for the Night of Ideas. Here is their powerful collaboration. Who here among you is in charge of human souls? I desire to meet that one. The one who unlocks the soul from its cage. I desire to meet that one. The lover made whole through sorrow and rage. I desire. The threshold keeper, middleway walker, axis of music and wine. A creature from myth beside us, hidden right here since time. The rigorous drunk and sovereign both, a glance, a graze, a haze. A possessor of higher knowledge involved with every being in space. No laws in effect, in fact, full flaws in effect. In fact, the moon of every night. In fact, the sun, a secret living in plain sight. In fact, are you here because of me? I am here because of your light, planets reach for immortality, involved with the pull of the sun. Lover beloveds through space and time, a star must be warm for someone. Desire desires desire itself, desire desires itself. Desire desires desire itself, desire desires itself. Desire desires desire itself, desire desires itself. And when your desire is my desire, when my desire yours. When your desire is my desire, when my desire yours. Should they crack the door just then, the room would be found empty. We are only mind. We create ideas. The bloodstream from beyond boils in us, breathlessly unveiled. <gasps> Breathlessly unveiled. <gasps> Breathlessly unveiled. <gasps> Until death, the union takes breath. <gasps> and I'm left. I'm left. I'm left. I'm Desire desires desire itself, desire desires itself. Desire desires desire itself, desire desires itself. Desire desires desire itself, desire desires itself. And when your desire is my desire, when my desire yours, should they crack the door just then, the room would be found empty. We are only mind, we create ideas. The bloodstream from beyond boils in us, breathlessly unveiled. And so we listen, listen to know, know to do, do to progress, progress to arrive, arrive to find, find to lose, and lose yourself. Listen to know. And know to do and do to progress, progress to arrive, arrive to find, find to lose, lose yourself. 
Lose yourself to be found. Let yourself be found by yourself. Find yourself to know, to know yourself. Know yourself to love and love to be loved. Then everything will become clear. Everything will become clear. Everything. Everything. Everything will become clear. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Taukida Tanya Evanson. I'm a poet, author, and multidisciplinary artist, and I'm joined tonight by Puriya Purnazeri on tanbur, which is a Kurdish lute with 6,000 years of history behind it. Um, we thank also the Aga Khan Museum for inviting us to participate in the Night of Ideas, a night that looks at uh, the ability of human beings to live sustainably on planet Earth, which requires some psychological change, some spiritual awakening and control, an ability to control our wild inner animal. Now on Earth, it is estimated that there are 10 quintillion insects. Some are endemic, native to a region, and others are invasive. 10 quintillion. Suckers don't bother, only hierarchy or tears. They infect us even in our sleep, set up websites in our dreams as we search for loopholes in their net. They say, you're rich in a poor country, so you're rich. You're poor in a rich country, you're probably rich. You're poor in a poor country, I still take your blood. They want us to go down, one by malarial one, taking action without heart. Is it best that no regard for what coin cannot buy? You can't take it away. You can't take it away. You take invasion path where you take no salary at all. This is our human duty. Come straight out the dead and fallen leaves. A forest, a fine example forest. Fossils from here, right up the interstellar. A beetle regenerator who take out and put back into the soil of which we are all citizens. Their balls of dung are more powerful than we will ever know, and they emerge fully formed from it. There's no world without animal. 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 Never mind the income they put in. Honey, pollen, silk, shellac, wax, gold, retail, data, food, and food. I mean, animal raised dust inside and out. We took all that capital and spent it because our animal was hungry or angry. A dishonorable organism with all this stolen property. And for our children, for our children, is there anything but bankruptcy? Retirement, saving, pension? No crime will save us now. No enterprise, no amulet. What is coming may be far worse than any fraud or blood theft. So pray, take action with heart to survive hostile conditions. Be like the scarab from Kemet to roll the sun across the morning sky again and stimulate dead hearts back to life. My heart is the mud mask at Jenne, beating for the universe itself. Every year the rains take it, and faith alone rebuilds it. My heart is the pyramids of Kush, and the entire complex of Giza, and Teotihuacan and the ziggurat of Ur. And my heart is a Himalaya, and the grandest gesture of canyons, and at Naika, a giant cave of crystal clear. 
and my heart is the very Uluru, the original dome of the rock. And Mecca at Hajj is just us dancing around our own soft black stone. The wailing wall says, lean in and kiss me. Lhasa is a mountain gym, and the Ganges say, get naked and swim. Out of all these centers on earth, visit my grave at Karnak and ask for Muat, the mother of truth and morality. And she will weigh your heart against a feather. Physiology flutter. Atrial fibrillation, brother. Repetition rhythms, extra beats. We all have it. On earth as in us. The heart, the heart, the heart, the heart. A little later in the show, we'll see the last episode of an Iraqi family's beautiful musical heritage captured for the first time. The Aga Khan Museum is filled with incredible works of art and craftsmanship. But even for people who work here, having a chance to take these creations out from behind the glass and see them up close is exciting. This is where we really geek out. In Curator's Picks, we show you stunning craftsmanship with an intimacy not possible any other way. What we're looking at is an incredible page from a once intact book of poetry containing the compiled poems of the Timurid prince Sultan Hussein Baikara. He ruled from Herat in what is today Afghanistan between 1470 or so and 1506. And Hossein Baikar is remembered for being, amongst other things, an incredible patron of the arts. It was at his court that some of the 15th century's greatest poets practiced their art. In addition to being a great patron of the arts, Sultan Hussein Baikara was a poet in his own right. And this page is from uh, a compilation of his poetry, a compilation of poetry known as a divan of uh, his lyric poems. Uh, it's written in a language known as Chagatai, which is an Eastern Turkic language uh, using the Arabic script. And here we have just one folio from this manuscript, which has been dispersed. All of the pages in this uh, manuscript, including the one that we see here, um, really show the height of artistry of the craft of bookmaking at the late Timur Herat court. On this page, what we can see is this really beautiful use of gold sprinkling in the margin to have great color contrast between the gold sprinkles and the dark blue lapis substrate. We have a beautiful illumination, some of the finest illumination from late Timur Herat, overlapping cartouches with tracery. Uh, in gold and, and different colors. This is a panel of illumination that would have separated the end of one poem and the beginning of the next poem in the manuscript. So it's a visual marker in essence. Um, but what we can see is that these, uh, these panels uh, were meant to provide a sort of visual stop between individual poems. We then have the calligraphy where the color alternates between ivory and this more tan color uh, so that each couplet of poetry um, has alternating colors, uh, really meant to be a very delicate and refined polychromatic delight for the eyes. But perhaps most incredibly, the lines of poetry themselves are not written in pigment or in ink, even though they're multicolored. What these actually are, are cut out pieces of paper that are then pasted to the substrate. It's a kind of technique known as decoupage or decoupé. An artist working at the Herat court, who would have been a master of this technique, designed the calligraphy, cut it out, and pasted it on each of these sheets in the entire manuscript. Now, think about the fact that calligraphy is an incredibly rule-bound tradition, that each of these letters, the forming of each of these letters, is bound by certain rules as to how thick or thin each stroke of the letter is supposed to be. That's already difficult to accomplish, 
using pen on paper, imagine how much more difficult it is when you have to cut these little minute pieces of paper and glue them together to create the exact aesthetic that you're trying to achieve. So he would have been an incredibly skilled calligrapher and then an incredibly skilled technician to actually cut these really fine pieces of paper and to paste them in a way that is absolutely inapparent on, uh, the, on the page unless you look really, really, really closely. It was meant to inspire absolute awe, absolute gobsmacked awe at how could you possibly create something like this. You were meant to appreciate this page on so many different levels simultaneously. It speaks to a moment in the late 15th century in Herat, in present-day Afghanistan, when those who would have been occupying the very highest level of society were so deeply engaged in the life of the arts and in the life of the mind that it's really hard for us to even imagine how we could possibly replicate that. This is an awe-inspiring work of art. I can't get my head around how this could have possibly been made. Last month, we showed you the third in a series of videos from the Monica family. Their musical lineage has been handed down for generations, but never recorded until now. They selected the Aga Khan Museum as the site for this historic moment. And here is the fourth part and the last part of Healing Rhythms. I am Salah Monica, the father. And this is Tara Monica, and I am the daughter. And this is Ahmed Monica, and I'm the son. The Monica family is an Iraqi family with an Afro ancestor. We are here to celebrate the Black History Month and do our ritual that never been filmed or documented to perceive the secret and the ethnicity of the experience. But now is the time to share with you all the history of the Monica Sufi music here at the Aga Khan Museum. So this is the last episode of the series. I really hope you enjoyed the show with us. And I want to thank you so much to watching us and thank you the Aga Khan Museum to let us make this show here for the first time. I just want to mention that in Iraq there is a lot of Sufi tariqahs and ritual. There is in, in Baghdad, in Mosul, in a lot of places and also in Basra there is a lot of ritual tariqas and one of my favorite one is the sada. I really used to enjoy the songs and the dance and the sound of the of the deaf. As Tara mentioned, like there's a really multiple traditions and rituals and there's a Sufi ritual there. There's an Afro Sufi in Basra and also there's a there's Arabic Sufi in Basra and all this tradition is very, very, very important. And you see the interconnection between this family, they go visiting each others. And uh, also there's different religion there too. And on this note, I want to ask my father, like, because he lived for like different generation time and different time there in Basra uh, about who's these traditions, what their names and uh, how, how they were living like for example, the 70s, 50s, there. Baba, I said a question, if you can talk about the traditions and the traditions and the traditions in Basra that have been affected and that have been affected by the lives of life. In the house of Nika, also, there is a special place for them, other than the house of Nika. I call it Sada. This is used on إيقاع دفوف يقرعوها هي تأثرا بالطرق الصوفية السادة أدنى بها بدوي وبيها النعامي والقادري خاص في بيت وليك بالإضافة إلى أكو أنه في البصرة وفي العراق عموما طرق كثيرة منها اندثرت ومنها لا تزال عائشة مستمرة 
من الطقوس اللي اندثرت الوريم الوريمة الواجيندو الانجوروكا الوايا هاي ايقاعات كانت بصرية وبيها طقوس خاصة وبأغاني خاصة اندثرت واللي بقت لا تزال هي الحبوش النوبان تشيتانجا تشيتانجا وبالاضافه الى الطقوس الصوفيه منها القادريه منها الرفاعيه منها النعيميه منها الردينيه هاي الطرق الصوفيه منتشرة في عموم البلد زين بابا اريدك تحكي شوي عن الاديان المختلفه كانت في البصره والعراق همينا مثل بس بالبصره خاصه في العراق عصرتها. عموما في العراق عموما وفي البصره خاصه تلاحظ معظم الملل موجوده المسلمين موجودين النصارى موجودين اخواننا المسيحيين اليهود موجودين ايضا المندائيين الصابع ايضا موجودين وكلهم متلاحمين ويعيشون حياه اجتماعيه جميله جدا وبها تالف وحب ولكن السياسه عملت ما عملت We are talking about Iraq, like Iraq is Mesopotamia, is the first civilization in the world on this, like the intersection of a lot, a lot of people and religion, like it's like 14 religion in Iraq. And there's a lot of different people and like roots of this people and the connection and their rituals and their secrets. And, uh, and that's why like, you know, this, this, I, we are so proud to be Iraqis and uh, to share with you all. And thank you so much really for, uh, listening to our music, watching our conversation. I hope you learned something about Iraq as well, and uh, specifically about the black history of Iraqi people and celebrating here at the Aga Khan Museum. Thank you so much for this opportunity. And uh, thank you for this, for all Canada to celebrate the Black History Month in February, which is a really nice ritual to celebrate everyone here in this country, to feel included and uh, part of this. Uh, journey and we that we are as an immigrant we feel really belonging here as well and um, we'll go to the fourth mood Simba and enjoy this is, this time will be two songs uh, Sinoma Simba and Simba, Simba and Goroma as well and uh, yeah thank you so much
That's all for this episode. Thank you for joining us from everyone at the Aga Khan Museum in Toronto. I'm Amirali Alibhai. I hope to see you at the Aga Khan Museum soon.